Victor Delic on the table. I feel like there's been a similar instance in a pool game. I can't quite remember. I feel like it's happened somewhere though. Eklan Kachi took the first rack against Skyler Woodward on table two. I think the most extraordinary reason for stopping and even abandoning a day's play was at the World Amateur Championship back in the 90s in Bulawayo in Zimbabwe. There was an infestation of flying insects and they landed on the tables and they couldn't play. Phil Yates, the stat man there. Always got a good story to tell you fans watching at home. Well, a story. I think it's for people to make their own minds up whether they're good. Yeah, it does look like there's a 5 9 combo on. It's certainly going close to the pocket. We can't quite tell if it's on. This positional shot. Well, that'll kind of make our mind up. So it must be pretty close. Often when the two balls are very close together, even if it's not dead set, you can manipulate the angle a little bit in a certain side. That's what he's looking at. Nicely done. You spotted call. He knocked it in. Oliver Sholnocki. I think he's perhaps best known for beating Shane Van Boning in last year's World Nine Ball Championship. And if he can do that, well, you can beat anyone anytime. It was also late on. So SVB was in stroke. But Sholnocki prevailed 11 5. His other wins on the way to the semi-finals of that event. He overcame the likes of Wojciech Shevchik, 11-10, and he beat Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, 11-9, in the, the quarter-finals. Eventually succumbed 11-9 to Omar al Shaheen in the last four. Now over on table two, I think Skylar Woodward could really alleviate some pressure by getting the win here. But he's 2-0 down to Eklund Kachi already. Kachi, of course, under no pressure whatsoever. His fate is sealed. Yeah, Skylar was asking me not too long ago, is six points enough, Carl? I said, I'll just win another pal and you should be good. Still got three matches left to play. Extension code. next match up tonight is against Omar Al Shaheen and then he'll finish his last match of phase one against Kelly Fisher that could prove to be a very important match that one The gap is halved. Catchy's lead 2-1. Must say I'm really enjoying this day. So many permutations still. So much to think about. As for Joshua Fuller, all he wants to do is keep the, the juggernaut rolling, keep amassing points, and putting himself in a really powerful position to skip from phase two to phase three, which is the final day on Monday. This looks a tricky position Joshua is faced with. He's got to try and kill the cue ball. Yeah, that's why he played it low left. 
And he did a fine job of that. If he'd have just rolled the one ball in, he would have ended up hooked on this two. So that's why he played a little kill shot. Playing for the 3 8 combo up into the top right. Not only does he have to make sure he pots the eight, looks pretty set. He's got to get the right angle on the three after this shot. That's why he's left the cue ball low. So when he pots this ball in the left centre, he's got an angle he can work with. If he's not got an, a natural angle to run the cue ball through, he might stun it up the right hand side of the table. Yeah, that's perfect. Also, I absolutely love watching him play. Apart from the fact he's got skill off the charts, he's still got that youthful exuberance. He loves the game. He loves being out there potting balls. And what a graceful rack that was. So stylish. 1-1. One, one. Skyler's not hanging around in rack four. He was 2-0 down against, well, the man that holds the table up in 16th place. Catchy, just two wins from 13. It's been a poor, poor week. Skyler's fighting hard, though. Been battling all week. He's had wins. He's had losses. He said he's been playing some good stuff. And he does look to be playing some good stuff. Level board there. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, you're right about Scarlett Woodward, actually. He's one of those players, I think a little bit like Kelly Fisher. They seem to have been on the bubble pretty much from the go. Certain players have had big highs and the equivalent low, whereas Woodward and Fisher have been going along, always <laughs> needing wins, but never in a perilous position. But as you say, Carl, if he can win this one and make it seven points, I think he can have a, a degree of safety. He can exhale. Six ball has just kept rolling and it's sat on top of the three ball three balls the lowest ball on the table if you are new to nine ball pool you've just switched on this channel you always have to go for the lowest ball possible The temporary break in play there was because there was a safety announcement, don't know whether you heard it, from the venue saying please ex exercise caution when exiting the hotel and the, the general facilities here in the stadium itself. Exercise caution with that safety as well, Mr. Sean Nocky.
I think that's a first for me, Carl. Uh, a Q Sports match. Suspended, if only briefly, for a, a safety announcement. Yeah, it's just got the feeling of one of them days, hasn't it, Phil? I still feel like I'm sat on the wrong side of this comms box with you, though. I think for the next match, I'm going to move over to your chair and let Michael sit in mine. <laughs> Joshua's probably going to draw this off three rails below the nine. Yeah, there you see, coming over towards that right-hand side of the table. Always giving you a shot on the six ball. All about percentages this game. And now he's playing down anywhere bottom of the table for the left centre or even the top left pocket. The options are always going to be there. Now, he'd like this cue ball to slow down a little bit. That's a little bit loose, Joshy Voigt. Terrific at these thin cuts, though, together with his fellow left-hander, Jason Shaw. And there he goes again. Impossible to say how many times he's dished up on a pool table. It would be perhaps in the millions. Joshua Filler, great to watch and going great guns in this Predator Q's Premier League pool. He leads this match 2-1. Looks like we've returned off the break just in time to see Skyler Woodward miss the eight ball. Oh, dear me. When you catch the near jaw on these four-inch pockets, certainly by as chunky amount as that, they won't fall. He's got to swerve this, trying it the rail first. Oh, half ball on the eight. Yeah, that's fine. Cue ball's not exactly landed how he wanted it. Sort of on the 50-yard line, but he's still big favourite to pop this in the right centre. Big game for Skyler. Needs to cut out them 
mistakes. You can't help but wonder whether that error will prove expensive in the final analysis. Kachi regains the lead at 3-2. We'll keep you right up to date, of course, with any score updates over on table two. Well, the five was in. Does the one squeeze past the two? If it does, that's a, a real bonus. I think it does. Joshua was just signalling where he would like the cue ball on this next shot. You see, that's a subtle shot, but he's played it so well. The, the application of side to widen the angle off the, the top cushion to avoid the, the brown seven. Nothing outlandish about it, but all players know. Just top notch. Yeah, he's he's as pure as they come on a pool table. Obviously, we've got a lot of great players here, but when Joshua Filler is on form, running the balls out, just something a little bit different about the way he strikes the cue ball. Would it be fair to say, Carl? Intimidating? Yeah, it certainly can be intimidating. That's right, Phil. He gets on with it, doesn't he? These racks, you know, they're over very easy. Just the way he plays the game. Look at that. Perfect on the nine. Easy on the eye, but most certainly not easy to beat. Joshua Filler, the man of the tournament so far. He leads 3-1. Now, the last time we saw Scarlet Woodward, he wasted a really good chance to take the lead in this match, missed an eight ball. Looking good again, this time to draw level. Anywhere but straight on the seven. This next shot for Skyler is all about just leaving a nice angle on the eight. And that's fine. So it looks like Skyler's going to tie this match up. And that's just what he needed after that last glaring mistake in the previous rack. Some really good pool today, some really close matches with lots of significance attached. On five points, how Shonnocki would love to forge a comeback here. One ball nearly away in the side pocket then. It both points. And it stayed on the table. It's made things a little trickier. He can play a back cross bank double. That means the cue ball will be travelling. I don't know if you could hold position for the red three. Let's see how he gets on with this. I think he's going for it. He's trying to 
bank that in the left centre and it's close. Needs his cue ball to slow down and it looks like it's gone. It's a nice shot there from Oliver. Sean Lockie is currently sat in ninth, tenth place, around the tenth place, and he's on five points. So he's at that stage, isn't he, Phil? He just he certainly wants another win, doesn't he? Two would be ideal. Yes, another player who could really shake things up is Omar Al Shaheen. He hasn't played yet today. He's got four matches, all of them over on table two. Three of them in succession. So he could do big things or fizzle out. Sean Lockie's face with a five ball now. It's a little thinner than he would have liked. And he's going to play this. I think he'll play this with a bit of right hand English. And he's going to try and come down the path of the right hand side of where the nine ball is. That's the route he's going to come. If he can't hold it to play for the green six in the same pocket as he's going to pot this, he might just take a little bit of a gamble. Main thing is pot your ball. Played it with left. Needs to miss the nine. Where's the eight ball? He's getting a little close to the eight. Oh, as he sat on it, he's rushing around to look. His body language will tell us. Decided to play with low left. There you see, just misses the nine. Just watch this eight ball. Does it come back and sit on the cue ball? Can he see the potting angle? He can't. He's down quick. He's playing this into the top far right. That was actually a real nice shot he's played there because he had to go close to the side pocket. Knowing full well he was going to come back across the table close to the other pocket. So this has been a, a tidy job. As it was for Eklund Catchy on the other table, he's taken a 4-3 lead over Skylar Woodward. One rack in it there. Looks like being the same here. Although there's always a small element of doubt when the cue ball is close to the cushion like this. There you go. There you go. I can't honestly say I thought he would miss it. But there's just the the minuscule chance. Certain players who play the game of pool, you fancy knocking them nine balls in all time, but then there's others who you just feel you never know, Phil. Well, as if he needs it, Joshua Filler has just been handed a gift. He leads 4-1 against Oliver Shonnocki, and if he wins this match, which now looks increasingly likely, he's going to be sitting pretty clear at the top of the table. Eklund catchy on table two. He's on the hill. He leads Skylar Woodward 4-3 in that match. That's interesting because there's a little bit of pride at stake, Phil. If Eklund wins that match, he goes on three points, the same as Mac, Max Lechner. And they will both have one game left to play. Who is going to finish bottom of the Premier League pool? And then you go right to the top of the table. And we can say this. If Joshua Filler wins this rack or wins a subsequent rack and completes victory, he will have 13 points and he'll have a three-point lead at the top of the standings. He will be powerfully placed, not only to make the top 10, which is already well under lock and key, but to make the top six. And what's more, it's filler to break in rack six. Okay. 
all this success, all these racks piled up, all of these points accumulated, and yet he's still annoyed. He gets a bad rub. Yeah, I think um, it can often look like sour grapes or begging or whatever you want to call it, but I think it's just a natural instinct. You break, you can see the ones are going to come round the table and it stops in its tracks and you're like, thanks. But it happens. He knows. He's still a young man. He's got bags of experience. I am not criticising in any way. I'm actually praising him up because it just shows he's got an insatiable appetite for success. No matter how much he achieves, he wants more. I think Joshua was asking a little much on that safety. Skyler Woodward just appeared. He's got these three balls to go hill hill. And what a final rack that would be for Skyler. He's still got games left to play, but winning that point there, well, that would really help his cause. Where's the cue ball? It's near the side. Caught the point. In America, they call that the titty, Phil, the jaw. We call it the jaw or the points. Or the bump. That was a little wide. <laughs> he would have been a little worried. And that's what happens when you don't get the cue ball exactly where you want. You're kind of fuming with yourself. And Anyway, is Hill Hill over on table two? Joshua Filler. He's playing a swerve shot and he's over swerved it. Sean Lock is still in this match. Needs to take care of these balls first, but they're all sat in nice positions. And whenever you get a layout like this, usually it can only go wrong by a poor positional shot. Then you end up chasing the rack. At this level, when you break off, it's something akin to serving for the set or for the match in tennis the good thing for filler having built a 4-1 lead even if he doesn't win this rack off his break he'll have the opportunity to do so in a couple of racks time Nice kid is Oliver Shonoki. Seen him around the venue. Always says hello. Always smiling. Strikes me as the type of player who really enjoys being around the venue and the tournaments. And he's been having quite a little bit of success over the last couple of seasons. Granted, he's not won the big major, but he's been there in the thick of it on the last day. Did win the Diamond Open nine ball last year, but you're quite right, the, the majors. He's building up to those. We've talked about this before, Carl. His technique is not textbook. It's effective. That's undeniable, but it's not textbook. Very wide stance. Yeah, and he tilts his head like a cross on the cue. That's obviously because he sights the ball better that way. He's got some kind of dominant eye going on. Some of the greatest pool players in the world. Textbook. They wouldn't be deemed to be that great. So it's not as important. It's just kind of when you're watching, you know, when you watch... Somebody like Federal Gorse, who obviously couldn't be here due to visa issues, which is a shame. He's very good textbook correction. But Oliver gets the job done, and that's what matters. This nine ball to stay in this match.
Filler was unlucky on his break off. The one didn't play ball. Then he overswerved, and from that chance, Oliver Sholnocki keeps the match alive. Filler's lead is now trimmed to 4 2. So much pool action. One of those days you don't know where to look. Well, stick with us if you want to see table one. If table two appeals, it's on matchroom.live. Big deciding rack going on over on table two between Eklund Kachi and Skylar Woodward. Here on table one, Oliver Sholnocki breaking off, trying to get a little closer to Joshua Filler. He had terrible luck on the one, didn't he? With his break off in the previous rack. This time, the luck goes full circle. This is that final rack, Skylar Woodward. He did get to the table. Eklund catch, he was clearing up. He played a bad positional shot and hooked himself. And Skylar needs these two balls to put himself on seven points. And I think he's done it. Just got to take care of this nine ball. Just don't hit it thick and you're good to go. There it is. Skylar Woodward, his prevailing emotion is one of relief. That's the 30th match to go the distance in this tournament. And maybe after that, Skylar Woodward will go the distance. This match not quite so close. And the end could Nay, no, should be nigh. Extension, please. Just these two balls left for Joshua Filler, and he will have one more match left after this very game. He will have played 14 matches. And his last game will be the last match tonight on table one okay it's david alcady this for the match